strolling over the rugged mountain chain of Sayadri in the east and descending to gently rolling plains in the west is a tiny district with verdant and lush forests covering 95% of its area. Not being caged in brick, wood and iron, the traditional communities which reside in these forests live a life in complete harmony with nature. The experience of life in the forest has made it abundantly clear that nature is the source of light and air, of food and water, and of natural medicine, the knowledge of which has been passed down from time immemorial. Welcome to the tribal land of Dangs in Gujarat. The hilly landscape of the Dangs is home to a rich and diverse variety of flora and fauna. Amidst the fast-flowing rivers, numerous waterfalls and lush bamboo breaks, the soft mists and the cool climes of this unique environment make it ideal for the profligate growth of trees and plants of teak, sajad, bamboo and an astonishing variety of important medicinal plants. Mr. Mahesh Singh also echoes the same fact. Dung is the extension of Western Ghats, so it's very rich in biodiversity. As far as plant diversity is concerned, really dung is very good in shrub, herb and trees diversity. Lot of medicinal plants are being found in dangs. More than 300 plus species are being reported, which are being used in either forms by these traditional dangi bhagats for treating different diseases in dangs. The antiquity of dangs is endorsed by her ancient people, the tribals. They continue to inhabit their traditional dwelling places in the remote areas of the deep forest and hilly interior. Though there are few direct references to the history of the Dangs, it appears that this area formed the part of the Dandakaranya forest of the Ramayan age. Supporting this view is the Shabri temple situated between Badripada and Subir, which is believed to be the Shabri Pradesh of the Ramayan era. This fact is further confirmed when the Dangis through their folk songs refer to the various incidents of the Ramayana. The tribal culture is essentially forest-based. Ethnic religious customs, the tradition of superstitious beliefs and the eternal rhythm of the season are strong enough reasons for the emergence of a string of festivals to celebrate their bonds with nature. <laughs> Their language is primitive and they believe in a supernatural world containing both good and evil. Their constant fear of the spirits only reinforces their faith in prayers, rituals, offerings and sacrifices. The Dangi deities are natural objects made of stone and wood. The sun and the moon are referred to as Suraj Dev and Chandra Dev. The diet of the Dangis depends on forest produce. Food grain called Nagli forms an integral part of the Dangis daily consumption. The Dangis are surrounded by and closely associated with the life of the forest. This intimate relationship between human life and nature has become their source of knowledge. And nowhere is this more evident 
than in their grasp of the healing properties of plants and herbs, the genesis for the oldest healing system in the world, Ayurveda. Dang is having very rich biodiversity. In Gujarat, so far 915 medicinal plants have been recorded out of 249 plants alone found in Dang district. The Dang district cater the need of the all the pharmaceutical industries of Gujarat. The Dang is the natural laboratory of medicinal plants as well as other flora and fauna. Natural medicine has been an integral part of tribal life. Health safeguards from locally available sources of lifestyle and food habits. In abundance in the dance is the bamboo. Consumption of tender bamboo has been an important part of the tribal diet. During the season of plenty, the natives consume tender bamboo in abundance and then store it in pickled form for consumption for the rest of the year. It is believed that the tender bamboo gives resistance against various diseases like cancer. This district, I have already come to a conclusion, of course based on certain presumptions, that doesn't have at all cancer precedence, incidence of cancer. The reason being, the people take tender bamboo. This habit of uh, swallowing the bamboo in, in terms of pickles or in terms of tender bamboo has led to a lot of uh, disease-free, uh, cancer-free phenomena in this district and I think we have to only, science and research has only to causally relate both the phenomena to each other. Natives use herbs for all kinds of diseases and psychosomatic disorders. The Bhagat, who is considered to be the friend, philosopher, guide and healer, is the local medicine man. He is fully conversant with the uses of medicinal plants. In the villages of the dance, this local doctor is often the only person who knows the availability of the medicinal plants and the medical use of individual parts of the plant like the bark, pulp or roots for the treatment of specific disease. There are many Bhagats and Boers in the district who have been treating different diseases using their traditional knowledge since ages. For the documentation of their traditional knowledge as well as training new people, we have started a project called Guru Sashya Parampara. These Bhagats play an important role in the lives of the tribals. So in fact in our uh, routine health programs, we try to involve these Bhagats so as to create awareness among the people. Uh, in the past also we have kept special training programs for these Bhagats for their capacity building. A journey through dance would be incomplete without a closer look at some of these life-giving plants. The Arjun tree is one of the widely used medicinal plants for cardiac ailments. It is botanically known as Terminalia arjuna. The powder of the bark is made into a decoction and is given as a medicine. A reference can be found to this treatment in the ancient book of Indian medicine, Charak. Botanically known as Rao Wolfia serpentine, the Sarpaganda is a very effective medicine for hypertension and insanity. The root of this herb is rich in medicinal properties and is widely used in Ayurvedic medicine. The Safed Nusli herb is botanically known as Chlorophytum borivillanium and grows in abundance in the forests of the Downs. It is the root of this herb which contains the medicinal properties and its extract is used as a health tonic by the Dangis. One finds its literary reference in the ancient book called Nighantu Adarsh. Jangli kale or chow, as it is locally known, Musa is a plant that appears like a small banana tree. 
The Musa finds its literary reference in Nighandu Adarsh. Adarsh is the part where it's my coach, okay, in a parade, and if she collapses, I but Nana Porsche, you know, Biave, you know, Nana Sokranik and Mote Sokranik, Deba Pave, you need Charpant by Pajan, but do sorry, my conduct, Taja, and Haru Taja. You know, Pani Janike, you know, Kamala Butarilaki. ये चौमासा में हमारे ये लोग से ते बता लावी नेटलो इतने तब भागा हुए इतने तब एक बेट कट का खाई जाता पिसा सुध जाता है जाता पिसा में कोई पत्री का कहीं रहवानु भाई नथी का कमला थवानु भाई नथी पहले बच खाई जाते हैं नो ये पनु पे खाई चीज़ है आधा थोड़ा वासिका the Ardusi shrub is found in the forests of the Dangs the shrub's roots are given in the form of decoction for treating common cold. Bilamo or Semicarpus anacardium is found only in the Dangs district and is a very important tree referred to in Bhav Prakash, one of the ancient books of Ayurveda. The medicinal preparation from this tree is used for curing cough and gout. A woody climber, Vavding, botanically known as Embania ribus, is used by the tribals as an antidote for snake bite. Adorned with beautiful lavender flowers, the Kachnar is botanically known as Bauhinia acuminata. It is believed by the Dangi Bhagats that the bark of this beautiful flowering tree can be used for curing deadly diseases like cancer. While Harde, Terminalia chibula, is widely used medicine for constipation and piles. Out of the 600 herbal purgatives indicated in the ancient tome Charak, most can be found in the dance. Bio or Pterocarpus marsupium offers preventive and curative remedies for one of the most common diseases afflicting us today, diabetes. The wood of this tree is used as the medicine. Bio also finds its reference in Charak. Considering the availability of these medicinal plants in large quantities, a pharmacy has been set up in the district capital, Awa. Most of the raw material that goes into the making of the medicines in this pharmacy is procured from the forests of the Dangs. This pharmacy supplies Ayurvedic medicine to government hospitals and dispensaries all over the state. According to the World Health Organization estimates, 80% of the world's population uses herbal medicine. Of the 119 plant-derived pharmaceutical medicines, about 74% are used in modern medicine in ways that correlates them directly with their traditional use as plant medicines by native cultures. The Dangis, however, are forced to depend on minor forest produce for their existence. They gather considerable quantities of roots, barks, and vital organs of the plants. Due to this over-exploitation, valuable vegetation gets threatened. In order to propagate and preserve the highly prized medicinal plant species for the future, two botanical gardens have been laid out by the government. These gardens serve the very important purpose of conserving the endangered flora and at the same time educating the tourists about the medicinal plant species. Medicinal herbs, the natural asset of the Dangis, have received its due acknowledgement from the administration. In Dangs, there are more than 200 varieties uh, of medicinal plants available. The Bhagats and Buas are already using these uh, medicinal plants for the treatment of so many diseases. From administration side, our ad, uh, emphasis is on uh, commercial cultivation of these species so that there is no undue pressure on uh, forest areas. 
with that people should start earning something from these medicinal plants in the first phase 25 species of medicinal plants have been identified and the commercial cultivation has started nurseries have been made and from the next year some of these species are savet musli ashwagandha harde ashoka so our emphasis is basically to promote these medicinal plants cultivation cultivation and with that people should start some livelihood from these plants the people of forest areas are giving the rights and privileges accordingly they are collecting minor forest produce and non wood forest produce from the forest areas and they are exploiting lot many roots bark and other vital organs of the plants why which lot many plants are getting threatened so there is a urgent need to identify all the medicinal plant species which are endangered and need to be cultivated and preserved in nature dangs as i know has been a storehouse of very very rich medicinal plants and these medicinal plants have been used since ages overall i can say that this district has got a fantastic contribution and will be always contributing to the health systems by its uh, herbal and medicinal plants potential there are certain chronic diseases which only respond to the medicinal plants and they being very copiously found very very widespread in its own uh, region in this region i'm sure the costs should also be cheaper and there would be also a reverse flow of dollars to this country because people would like to come and have cheaper systems for chronic diseases than to be admitted in hospitals and spend dollars and millions of rupees the tribals who are really the children of the forest have inherited a treasure chest of knowledge in their age old wisdom their health wealth and culture depend on the forest the culture of the forest has enriched the culture of indian society there is a need to protect and preserve the tribal knowledge system serious effort is required to evaluate tribal medicine and to reinforce the positive aspects of local health traditions